we're going to use this through the, the whole session and keep, keep coming back to it a little bit. But what I want you to realize is you normally have multiple chillers, multiple pumps, multiple towers. So the question is, how do we pipe? What's the proper way to pipe? In this case, I've got three 500-ton towers. I've got two 500-ton chillers. And just to keep it interesting, I have one 300-ton chiller that we pick for the wintertime operations, kind of a correlate on the building, so we can just get by on one chiller. To keep it simple, I'm going to use a 10-degree range, which means my pumps would be 1,500 GPM, three GPM per ton on my 500-ton chillers and, of course, 3 GPM per ton on the 300 ton shell. So, how are you going to run that little small 300 ton shiller in the wintertime? How are you going to stage it? So, let's look at staging sequences of operation and ask the question. Now, I'm going to set this up the way I like to pipe things. I do like them piped this way. I do like a dedicated pump per shiller. I prefer it this way. This is the way I like to do it. So, we're going to do it this way. You can do it any way you want to. This is a place to start. But I want you to get in your mind that an engineer needs to slow down on all the chillers and do what we get ready to suggest to you. This is your responsibility as a design engineer. So what have I got here? I've got three 500-ton towers. I've got a pipe with a dedicated pump per chiller, headed pipe as we call it. I've got V1 and V1A on the towers that work together on off. V2, V2A on the towers, they work together. V3, V3A work together. I've got chiller 3, pump 3. You turn pump 3 on, chiller 3 has got flow, turn them on and off together. Same thing with P1 and C1, and you see the sequence. So here's my question to you. It's wintertime. I want to run that little 300 ton chiller. I want to run P1 at 900 GPM and C1, which is 300 ton chiller. So I've turned the pump on, I've got flow through that. I'm going to turn P2 and P3 off. Question is, how many towers do I run and which one? Do I run T1, T2, T3? Do I run them all? What do I do? Now, this is where it gets to be tricky, and this is where people are getting in trouble. So let's ask that question, and let's walk you through what I think is a fundamental design tool you should be doing on every project. So here's, let's take the situation. The statement is, I've got three 500-ton towers. Each one of them has weird dams in them, and the allowable turn down is 50%. So the minimum flow rate for any one of my towers is 750 GPM without getting dry air disease. So here, so I've got a minimum flow of 750. My max is 15. Could be a little bit older than that, but let's just use 15 as the max flow rate per cell. And I want to see how you stage them. What staging sequence are you going to give to the control vendor? You cannot give this to the control guy. He, they, he or she may not understand what you're doing. You have, to dis, you have to give them the sequence, and they'll program it, but you've got to tell them what sequence you want. And what other staging sequences not shown would be allowed? And the reason I ask that question, if you, if you can give me some that I'm going to show to you, you are understanding what we're trying to do. So let's take the big step here. I'm going to ask you to slow down for a second. Bear with me with all this, because this is simple, not complicated. And if you'll follow this simple little procedure, you'll stay out of trouble and you won't have dry air disease. So here we go. I've got three towers. I've got weird dams in my towers. The minimum allowable flow rate is 750 GPM. They're 500 ton towers, 10 degree range, 3 GPM per ton. So the 300 ton tower has a flow rate of 900, and the 500 ton towers have a flow rate of 15. So let's look at go through a little staging sequence here to see if we can understand this. Let's start off with a wintertime operation, the little 900 ton chillers online. So P1's on, C1's on. P2, chiller 2, chiller 2 is off. Same thing for 3, it's off. So what is the flow rate going out to my towers? 900 GPM. Great, great, great. I've got 900 GPM on the towers. Now I've got T1, T2, T3 towers available, and I've got the shutoff valves, V1, V1A, V2, V2A on each one. Now if I went ahead and valved off tower 2 and tower 3, they're off. My flow rate through tower one would be what? 900 GPM. Is that acceptable? Absolutely. The minimum flow rate is what? 750. The max flow rate is what? 1500. That's an acceptable operating condition. That's fine. No problems. No dryer disease. Great. You got one fixed. Let's turn the pump one and chiller one off. Let's turn on number two. In other words, you got chiller two online, pump two online, chiller one and chiller three off. Total flow rate now is what? 
1,500 GPM. Great. So now we've got 1,500 GPM going out to the towers. How many towers are going to run at what flow rates? Well, let's, let's start off with the condition. Okay, let's let T1 and T2 be on. Let's take T3 off and valve it off. And that would give us, if it was balanced properly, what? 750 GPM per tower. Is that an acceptable operation? Absolutely. It's above the 750 minimum established by the rear dams. It actually might be slightly more efficient than running one. So that would be okay. Is there another operating condition I could run here? Sure, I could run one tower at 1,500. Any one tower could have hit 1,500 GPM, and that's fine, and I'll not get prior disease, and that's an acceptable operating condition to tell the control person. I think you begin to wake up a little bit now, hopefully. Now, I don't want to insult you. Let's go through another one. Number three, I've got the little tower, little, excuse me, the little chiller, and one of the big chillers online. I've got C1 and C2 online. I've got C3 off. I've got a dedicated pump per chiller, so I cut the pump off. I don't have any flow. My total flow is 2,400 GPM. Great. I got 2,400 GPM going out in three towers. How many towers are you going to run? Well, in this case, uh, I looked at having T1 and T2 online, which would give me, what, 1,200 GPM per cell. I've got T3 off. And is that an acceptable operating condition? Absolutely. It's more than 750, below the 1,500. That's fine. You can tell your control man that's a great place to run. What else could you do here? What's another option? Well, what would happen if we turn all three towers on at 800 GPM each? Would that be okay? Yeah, three divided by 24, three to 24, 800, 800 GPM each, and I'd be above the 750, below the 1500. Might be more efficient. You got to go to the tile dinner to see how it works out, but it actually might be that situation. But I don't want to insult you too much. Let's go to the very bottom. I think we've done enough of these. We'll go to the very last one, so you can kind of make sure you summarize this. Basically, the last one, I've got 3,900 GPM. All three chillers running, all three towers available. In that particular situation, as you see, I've got 1,300 GPM per, per cell, all three, three cells online, all everything running wide open. That's the summertime condition. Perfect. Now you've got every particular potential operating condition covered. You picked up on the 1,500. You picked up on the ones on in my chart. So that was your test to see if you understand what's going on. Now you've got this thing documented as to what a proper sequence would be so you wouldn't get in trouble. Now what do you do? You take that and you give it to the control vendor. The control vendor does one very simple thing. They control what you told them to do. So C1's online. They go look at T1 if it's working, and they go ahead and say, yes, they turn T1 on. They bow T2 and T3 off. You don't do this. This is what they do. They do the program but you have got to get in the sequence. Otherwise, you're going to have dry air disease. And when they get through, they'll keep building this thing up, and they'll line up one of these charts kind of looks like that. This is what they line up. But they don't know the min and max flows of these towers. That is your responsibility. That's what you've got to do. You're the, you're the person responsible as designing the systems. So to make a long story short, we have to give them the sequence and that tablet on, and then you're doing your job properly. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.